Hello, and thank you for that lovely introduction. I was utterly flattered. Um, so I'm Will Perry. I'm a Paralympic swimmer. I represented Great Britain in the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games last year. I competed in four events, 100 meters breaststroke, 100 meters freestyle, the 50 meter freestyle 4x50 relay, and the 200 medley. I made one final and top 20 finishes elsewhere. So, the Paralympic Games, what's it all about? For me and every other Paralympic athlete, it's about a celebration of difference, a celebration of difficulty and achievement. But I want to share a quick story on how I got there. So this is me on the blocks just before my very first race and doing breaststroke. So but I'm going to take you a month or two before then. I just competed in my very first European Championships, making my debut for Great Britain. Um, I'm sitting at home and my phone rings. I can see it's a British swimming coach. I thought, oh, I'm in trouble here. What's going on? Um, and it was the most simple call in my life, but also the most life-changing. Hi, Will. Tokyo? I was like, yeah, you're going. And I, to be honest, I nearly started crying. Um, and the first person, you're not allowed to tell people um, when you're selected. I had to keep it quiet for a month and a half. I phoned my mum immediately. And I have to say... Um, <laughs> I have to say, she started crying as well, and um, I, I left a bit of a weight on her shoulders because she had to go and see some fr family, I think five minutes after that, and had to clear herself up. But, um, but yeah, so Tokyo, the experience. What an experience. So many people ask me, what was it like? You know, how can you put it into words? And I, I, can never, I never can. So the best way I always describe it, and the, the thing I always say is that um, I remember watching the London 2012 Paralympic Games, um, actually here on the Isle of Wight when we were on holiday. Um, I remember watching this girl called Ellie Simmons. I'd heard of her before. Um, and my mum came up to me and said, this girl, she's got your condition, and look, at, look how amazing she is. And look, she's winning. She's won gold. And I, I have to admit, at that time, I wasn't particularly captivated, but I was really pleased to see there was someone else in my condition doing some good in the world. Um, and, but at this point, I wasn't even a swimmer. I hadn't even started. It was two years off from me even starting to swimmer. Nine years later, I'm having breakfast with her before our very first race. Just her and I in the Paralympic Village. We're about to go off on the bus together to compete in for Great Britain Tokyo. And it's a real pinch me moment. And it's fantastic. We're her heralded as heroes. When you look at the way, the way we're depicted in the media, um, alongside the Great Britain team. And says, look at these fantastic people. Look what they can do in the pool. Look what they can do on a bike. Look what they can do on skis. But that's not, that doesn't last very long. Remember, the Paralympics only comes around every four years. The Winter Paralympics the same. So when we come back, we have this massive homecoming event. Um, you know, we, we've got music, we've got artists celebrating what we've achieved in Tokyo. And you know, I'm outside, I'm acting like a celebrity, I'm signing autographs, taking pictures. Um, people think I'm this big deal. I genuinely don't, I think they're lying. Um, but you know, we're treated like stars, and we feel like stars. But when the party ends, it all changes. This is me and my family, minus one. Um, this is in Paris. But what if I were to tell you behind this smile, I'm nervous, I'm scared. Coming back from the Paralympics, you know, you're celebrated as a hero and often um, when you come back from the Olympics or Paralympics, you, you go through this process called the Olympic Blues. It's where you miss the buzz, the adrenaline and everything like that. And it's, it's an awful time, but it's made worse when you're abused in public. So if I were to tell you there, we were having a nice family photo taken, but I'm constantly looking around. I'm looking at people. I'll give you some examples. I'm laughed at, I'm photographed, I'm filmed, I've been touched, laughed at, mocked by all sorts of people in public from the country I've just represented a few months ago. I recall even leaving the homecoming event going back on the train, literally leaving the event, and there were kids laughing at me. I'd just been celebrated as a hero 30 minutes before. Why? 
Why must this be? <laughs> it, even now, I, I struggle to put it into words. I struggle to, to explain it. But what can we do? What can we do? And I felt, as a Paralympian, I have a platform of some description. I'm not like Peter Dinklage. I'm not a movie star. But I believe other people with autism, they don't really have, and I was one of these people before, the courage to speak up, to say, this is happening to us. Nearly all people with autism can report they've been, had some sort of, sort of abuse. People have, I've heard stories of people having rocks thrown at them, being held up against a wall, having money demanded from them, even being jumped over. My story, which happened on the 3rd of January, was I went shopping. I had a bad day, and I just went shopping. Everyone done, everyone's done that here. You know, you go shopping, you need washing up tablets, <laughs> you need deodorant. Um, I thought, yeah, yeah, that's a relatively normal thing to do. So I went shopping to my local supermarket, and as I was walking up to the door, there were three young girls, about 16, 15, all chatting away, having a laugh, as you do, until one of them noticed me. And I've noticed this my entire life. I'd like to say sometimes I'm wrong. I'm never always right, but I do get it right most of the time. I've experienced this for 21 years. Looked, they looked up, saw me, and they did the normal thing that everyone else does, is their heads bow, you can see the white in the bottom of their eyes, and they're looking at me. One, thing, one girl says something to the other two, and they start giggling, quietly, discreetly. And I'm eyeballing them, just to make sure that they know I'm looking. And I go in past the door, and I hear, I hear them burst out laughing, absolutely shrieking of laughter. So it bothered me. I continued, I did my shop, got everything I needed, went out and went around to confront them. And I know they were looking for me, because one of them was looking behind the door, as soon as I walked out, they just quickly darted back. I went and confronted them, and they told them I was overreacting, that I'd had a bad day. Turns out I had had a bad day, but I do confront people sometimes, just to try, try and make a difference. And as I walked away, I was like, oh, he was overreacting a bit, weren't he? Um, and I thought, what can I do? So I went home, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to rant. I'm going to go on social media. I posted this. Luckily, the bad language has been cropped out. Um, otherwise, I probably would have been censored. Um, but I explained my story of what happened. And actually, it's not that much of an extreme event um, that occurred. But the reaction I got was phenomenal. What surprised me was how few people knew about what goes on. No one knew. They're like, wow, I never, never knew. I never thought about it. I never considered it. And I had people, firstly with dwarfism, message me saying, oh my goodness, me too. I've had this. They've given me tons of examples. There's one really sad example someone gave me of a former classmate about 20 or 30 years ago. Um, someone with dwarfism, actually, she took her own life because she felt the abuse was too much. But I, I'm so thrilled to say that the response was so overwhelmingly positive. I had all sorts of media, reporters, radio, wanting me to share my story and make a difference. And it's amazing. Even when I've been on national TV explaining what's going on, there are still people who feel like they need to be the joker, be funny. I had people comment on my Instagram using the word midget. Now, midget is incredibly offensive. It comes back from the term of being a sand fly, and it originates from the freak show. Um, and they're doing that to deliberately get under my skin. And it just shows there are people being out there who are be being deliberately obtuse, even when I'm trying to make a difference. And what I'm here to say is that we do normal jobs. We are normal people. We have to pay bills. We have to go shopping. We have to fill up our car with petrol. So why should we, when we're doing that, why are we viewed as comical characters? Why should me getting out of a car be such a funny concept to some people? But again, it's been fantastic. I've been to see multiple politicians. I've met many other people with dwarfism 
who are also fighting this issue. You might have heard that Midget Gems has recently been um, removed from certain supermarket stores. Fantastic movement, but we're still not doing enough. This is a quote from a good friend of mine. Her name is Maisie Summers Newton, and she is, no other words for it, a double Paralympic champion, a world champion, a European record holder, an MBE, um, a world record holder, too many titles to even mention. And she said this to me when we got in the car, um, to, back from a para swimming competition. You know, Will, I don't think we'll ever be fully accepted into society. Now, what's really sad about this, for, you, for those of you who don't know who Maisie is, she's probably one of the most positive people I know in my life. She finds a positive in every negative, and she's training to be a teacher to try and educate the young generation on dwarfism, to show that it's a normal, it's a normal fact of life. And when she said that to me, it broke my heart because she's so positive, she's so outgoing, and for someone like that to say, for someone like her to say someone like that is just heart wrenching. So I felt I had to share it with you. And but if we're not going to be accepted in society, when are we going to be? So it's time for change. It's time for us to be no longer viewed as comical characters. I stand here not as a Paralympian. I stand here as someone with dwarfism. I shouldn't be asked to be treated as, as someone normal just because of who I am and what I've achieved. Everyone deserves to be treated equally. And we've come so far with it, we just, we just seem to have missed a train. So if we're not going to change now, when are we going to change? Thank you.